just uh, barely five o'clock in the morning on uh, Monday, August 22nd. I'm here to uh, do the John Gambling Show. I'm filling in for John. He's away on vacation. He may never come back because once I do a great show today with the guests I have, with my brilliant personality, I think I'm off and running to a new career. So anyway, I'm going in down here in Lower Manhattan, right around the corner from the World Trade Center next to uh, Trinity Church. And uh, we'll see where it goes. But hopefully I can survive the four hours and uh, who knows, be the next Don Imus, Howard Stern, and maybe even John Gamble if I do do well. That's it. East for you. Stephanie Gosk is over in Tunisia. So you can talk to her at 610. So what you'll do is we'll just open up the show and you're chatting a little bit with about yourself. And then as soon as I get her on the line, I'll, I'll tell you in your ear. And we have Stephanie on the line. You can just say, now we're going to go over to the Middle East. She's in Gerber, Tunisia. Let's go to JJ. Yeah, I'll, t I'll tell you to go. Let's okay. go check on our traffic and weather. We'll play a sounder. She'll, you know, she'll know what to do. She's done it <laughs> a hundred trillion times. Um, so we'll... On News Talk Radio 710 WOR, here's Congressman Peter King. Good morning. This is Congressman Pete King. And as you heard, I'm filling in for my good friend, John Gambling is on vacation. I want to uh, thank John for giving me the opportunity to do this. I have found whenever I go on John's show, you run into people over the next few days, and they want to talk about the show. And unlike some other shows, everyone's normal that I speak to. Now, maybe I'm not normal, but at least the people who listen to the show are. And I don't know if that's because of John or in spite of John, but uh, I want to thank the audience for uh, listening to me when I've been a guest, and hopefully you'll stick with me for a while when I'm guest hosting today. And, uh, again, it's really a great... Uh, privilege to be here, and uh, you know, we are really living in historic times. Uh, we'll be talking uh, later to Stephanie Gosk, the NBC correspondent, about what appears to be the downfall of Muammar Gaddafi after 30 years in power. Uh, we'll be talking to uh, Commissioner Ray Kelly, who will be, talking, uh, we'll be discussing what the NYPD is doing in the lead-up to September 11th, and uh, we have other guests on. We also have a former mem uh, member of MI6, which is the British equivalent of the CIA. We have uh, Bruce Beck, who's going to be uh, talking about sports. We'll find out what happened with Plaxico Burroughs last night. Uh, my good friend Ed Mangano, the county executive of Nassau County. He was under a lot of heat out there, and he'll be telling what he's doing to uh, straighten the, uh, the county out, the situation that he inherited. Also have uh, Devlin Barrett, who's a uh, reporter for the Wall Street Journal, and I will particularly enjoy uh, putting a reporter on the other end, since I have to answer all his questions all the time. And uh, also today I'll be helped by uh, Joe Bartlett and uh, T.J. Kennedy, who will be here to uh, help me out. In the event that a politician needs help from the media, I'm glad I have two people here to help me out. Oh, Joe. we're here. Don't worry. I we count got on you? back. I got your back. We can always do the work. <laughs> <laughs> That's what your brother told you, right? That's right. right. And before we go any further, let me just say, with uh, September 11th coming up, and this is a shameless plug for two friends of mine, uh, Jonathan Chris and Ed Ambrosino, but they have a, uh, a song out, uh, it's called Where Are My Heroes, and it talks about the men and women of the armed forces, of uh, police departments, uh, fire departments, and the job that they do. The uh, name of the song, I said, it's Where Are My Heroes, and it's uh, SojournRecords.com. Uh, and again, it's a very, very moving song, and uh, again, it's uh, all the proceeds go to uh, wounded warriors. So I would just ask people if they can to uh, try to find it, SojournRecords.com. And with that, I'm back here, and uh, I'm going to talk to John Gambling. I think something should be done with Joe Bartlett. I really think that he's, he's abusive, intrusive, unlike J.J., who could not be more pleasant, articulate, intelligent, and telling us when we have a beautiful day. Now, I know Ron Kuby doesn't believe any day is beautiful because he has such a sour attitude toward life. And uh, really, how are you going to put up with him? I mean, you're going to pray that I come back after you put up with Kuby for a while. Even I'm a little concerned about it. Uh, most guys, I'm a very frustrated athlete. I would uh, trade it all in to uh, pitch winning in the major leagues, but uh, I never made it. Uh, so my connection to sports is listening to great guys like Bruce Beck, the News for New York sports anchor, and I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So, Bruce, thank you for being with us this morning. It's 8.38. This is Pete King, and we're back for another hour and 20 minutes. And uh, I'm especially privileged that our next guest, uh, Nassau County, uh, Executive Ed Mangano is coming up. Uh, uh, just a little bit of background here. Ed was elected in 2009 in one of the most significant upsets in uh, Nassau County in New York political history. He unseated a two-term incumbent. He also unseated an incumbent, uh, at, yet at the same time, Newsday, which is the media 
uh, maven in our uh, part of the world basically gave no indication of the troubles that faced Nassau County, the deficit issues, the budget issues that faced. Ed Mangano walked into the middle of that. He's been attempting to fight it ever since, I think doing a tough, courageous job. But enough of the good things. Let Ed Mangano speak for himself. Ed, great to have you here this morning. Number one target. Now, we have been successfully attacked uh, back in 1993 at the World Trade Center and, again, the tragic attacks of September 11th. Uh, we've had another 11, 12 attacks attempted against New York, and one of the reasons that we've been able to uh, uh, stop them is because of the tremendous work done at the NYPD by Commissioner Ray Kelly, uh, who has really uh, put the NYPD in the forefront of fighting terrorism. There's close cooperation with the Nassau County Police, the Suffolk County Police, coordinated also with the state police and other law enforcement agencies around the state. But the fact is that uh, New York City has almost 1,000 police officers dedicated to uh, counterterrorism. To put that in perspective, the last time I checked, the city of Chicago, which has uh, about 4 million people, has four police officers on, uh, dedicated to counterterrorism. And uh, you, know, you know, one of the reasons for that is that Commissioner Kelly realizes that uh, uh, the FBI and the CIA and all the federal uh, officials, no matter how good they are, the fact is you have to have that local input, you have to have a real presence on the ground, and you have to really be innovative and uh, you know, be willing to uh, make those tough decisions and to uh, be monitoring it. And now, as we face uh, September 11th coming up, we're faced with not the dilemma, but uh, the decision-making of how to encourage people to live their normal lives, not live in fear, but at the same time doing all that possibly can to protect us from being attacked at any time, but especially during these 10th anniversary commemorations. And I understand that Commissioner Kelly is on the line. And good morning, Ray. It's great to have you with us. By the way, I saw you playing the drums. You are really a multi-talented guy. Mm -hmm. All set here, and it's uh, Pete King enjoying the Notre Dame Victory March. Mm -hmm. And I was going to announce that right now Notre Dame should win the national championship this year. I met with Coach Brian Kelly, gave him a few plays, told him what to do. And also, he knows I've saved all my eligibility, so I'm available if you want to <laughs> bring me in. Joe, you're laughing too much there. <clears throat> anyway, let me thank all of you for uh, uh, listening this morning. It's, it's at 9.52. We have a few minutes to go. But I want to, uh, as, the, as the Victory March uh, finishes in the background, <clears throat> let me thank all the guests this morning. Uh, Stephanie Gosk, who uh, reported from Tunisia, and Matthew Dunn, the MI6 agent with his book Spy Catcher. Devlin Barrett, a reporter at the Wall Street Journal who was mad at me because I made him get up and actually mm -hmm. do some work for a change. Uh, Bruce Beck, uh, the News 4 sports anchor. It was a great conversation. Heard all about his mother, which is really a very nice story. Nassau County Executive Ed Mangano and the NYPD Commissioner Ray Kelly, uh, which really, I think, uh, talking to Ray was a jolt back to reality of how, how tough the world is, how, what a dangerous world we live in, but yet we can't focus on it. We have professionals, police, FBI, counterterrorism experts worry about it. We go about our lives every day, but uh, realizing how dangerous the world is and how indebted we are to the people that keep us safe. Well, you know, we kind of, as a regular citizens, go along blissfully unaware of these dangers. I mean, guys like Kelly and you, you know in, in detail, or, you know, in greater detail, the dangers that we face every day. So it's, it's nice to know that you guys are on the case. Yeah, actually, you know, we get the briefings and you do try to keep up the intelligence around the world. and partly by a quirk, but I'm the only member of Congress who's on the Intelligence Committee and the Homeland Security Committee. So I sort of get it inside out and outside in as to what the threats are. And as Commissioner Kelly was saying, there are no known threats right now, which on the one hand should be good. The only bad part with, of that would be if we're not aware of the threat that's there. And that's the sort of the mindset you get yourself into, like when I was talking to the MI6 agent before. Let me thank everyone for uh, uh, listening to me today. Let me especially thank John Gambling for inviting me on. And let me thank uh, JJ and Joe for putting up with me and guiding me through it. All the people who give me hand signals and uh, <laughs> so I didn't miss too many commercials. And uh, I'm right now wrapping it up. So thanks again for everything. And uh, uh, Ron Cooby, don't listen to him tomorrow. Just play, replay tapes for me. Thank you all and have a good day. <laughs> hey, it's uh, just after 10 o'clock. Finished up the uh, John Gambling Show. That was interesting. I enjoyed doing it. I don't know how it came across. But it was a uh, good change of pace. Uh, I thought each interview seemed to work pretty well. You can see it's noisy down here in Manhattan, but uh, I survived it. And uh, hopefully uh, John didn't lose so much of his radio audience. Now it's back to the office to save the nation, the country, the state, 
and there's Sir Sophie Thank you.